from the timberlands from the forest on down to the ocean. The land that we live on doesn't necessarily always belong to one entity. It's a shared resource. Winter Lake is a great example of a restoration project on a large scale. What it's showing is that you can work the land, but you can also protect our natural resources. This is a project that has specific features designed to help the agriculture community irrigate their pastures, where the ranchers will have better opportunity to raise cattle that have better gain per day. And yet in the winter, when we don't normally graze cattle out here much, we'll have an opportunity to produce more fish and waterfowl out here for the community. Our culvert tide gates uh, behind me here are the meat and potatoes of this project. I've been around tide gates my entire life, and forever it was keep the water out, keep the water out. And there was no fish passage. That habitat out there in the wintertime is very productive for the fish. So we really needed to figure out how to get the fish in here in the wintertime, and that didn't take anything away from the grazing operations. We've got the capability here now. Not only can we let water in, but we can also get rid of a lot of water in a hurry too. Our motto has been or is, is that we grow beef in the summer and fish in the winter. Historically, floodplain habitats had channel networks that were created by thousands of years of tidal action. But since it's so flat, there's not a lot of power, if you will. There's not a lot of slope. And so you have to create them if they've been eliminated. The tide gates will let them in. They'll be able to live in the channels where they can feed in here until the floodwaters come. And then when the water gets about a foot to 18 inches on the field, they feel safe and they can move out on the adjacent floodplain pastures. People are like, oh, why do you ranch whatever? And I just tell them it's in my blood. It's just part of me, it is who I am. Here, if we can graze it and have ducks, geese, and all the wildlife and then the fish, and, and the cattle all working alongside each other, that'd be the ultimate, I think. The ecosystem evolved with grazing animals. While grazing animals can be a, a huge problem and a big detriment to the ecosystem, if we're going to have really healthy systems, then they have to be a component of that and they need to be managed right. Just like the bulldozers out here can be used to create all kinds of problems in wetlands, we're also using them to restore wetlands, and the same can be said for the, the cattle. I found in my life that going for a walk outside, hearing the birds is kind of the best, best medicine one can have, and so I wanted to kind of build a life connected and sort of structured around that. And I want all of our children to have the opportunity to be every day intimately connected with nature. So there could have been as many as 412,000 coho returning to the coquille on a big year. Growth rates for coho in wetlands are almost twice, sometimes three times the rate of fish living in forested stream network habitats. In some of this, you're going to see wetland forest in 40 years. So we're at Beaver Slough. Beaver Slough flows into the Coquille River just downstream of where the Winter Lake Project site is. Beaver Slough is a perfect example of an area that because of how wild it is, because of the habitat type we have here, because of the diversity of trees and shrubs, this is what we want a lot of other areas to look like. So our channels, when we're done digging in Winter Lake, will have a lot of overhanging vegetation like you're seeing all around me. We're not doing restoration for single species. We're looking at stacking benefits, and not just stacking benefits for nature, we're also stacking benefits for people. And in this case, we're stacking cultural benefits for people that have lived on this landscape for thousands and thousands of years. We all had to agree that the science said this would make more fish. It's important that success for this is that the Oregonians become connected, Northern Californians, perhaps people from all the Pacific Northwest recognize that it's an important area to see how wild ecological function is not only helping 
fish and wildlife populations, but helping the economy of Coos County and the state of Oregon. It wouldn't be fair to say that it's always been easy. It's really rewarding to, to, to look at it now and see the potential that it's got. And, and quite frankly, the potential that we're seeing here far exceeds, I think, anything we thought possible. From ranchers and farmers to the Coquille Indian tribe, we all use that land in different ways, but we all call it our own. Mm -hmm.